Hi guys, welcome to the electronics lectures. Today we will discuss bypass capacitors or they also called decoupling capacitors. In different circuits you can find capacitors put it in parallel. These capacitors usually ceramic and have different values and sizes. But why don't just put one electrolytic of a higher capacity? The short answer is that different capacitors behave differently at different frequencies. No one will tell you this important information in school. But without it, it's not possible to become good in electronics. You may already know that capacitors allow alternating current to flow through them. The higher the frequency of a signal, the lower its reactance. And it is true, but to a certain extent. In reality, there is no ideal capacitor that decreases reactance over all range of frequencies. Real capacitor has other parasitic parameters, as equivalent series resistance and equivalent series inductance, which affect frequency characteristic. But why these parameters exist? As you know, in reality everything has a resistance. Electrodes of a capacitor, leads and tracks on the board are no exception. Same can be said about inductance. Everything has a parasitic inductance. And exactly parasitic inductance is the reason why capacitor increases its reactance when frequency rises above certain value. Here is how the impedance of real capacitor looks like. It is the sum of resistance, reactance of a capacitor, and reactance of a parasitic inductance. As you know, resistance doesn't change its value over all frequency range. Capacitance decreases its reactance, and inductance in opposite increases when the frequency rises. That means that to a certain frequency our capacitor will behave like a capacitor, and for real will reduce its reactance. But after some frequency, inductive reactance will dominate, and impedance will grow. The bigger capacitor, of course, has higher parasitic inductance. For example, let's have a look at this electrolytic capacitor. It has long leads and large electrode, twisted in spiral. For sure, its inductance and resistance are high. Now let's compare it with this small guy. Ceramic capacitor of the same value. Even person that doesn't know electronics would say that its parasitic parameters are lower. But why does an increased impedance it's so important that everybody tries to reduce it? Let's have an example. You have a microprocessor that works on a frequency of several gigahertz. And you have a big 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor connected to its power pin. And you may say that it is a pretty solid value and it must be enough. Right? When the transistors inside processor switches, current consumption changes. And this change must be compensated by a capacitor. It must supply necessary current to a processor to run all logic without mistakes. Let's just calculate impedance of a such capacitor at frequency of 1 GHz, assuming that its equivalent series resistance is 1 ohm, and its inductance is equal to 1 nanohenry. Calculating these numbers, impedance will be equal to 7 ohms, which is extremely a lot, just a certain amount of current will be able to pass through it, and power a processor, which is might be not enough. And as you know, processors do not tolerate power instability. To eliminate this problem, capacitor with much smaller inductance must be put in parallel to this one. For example, ceramic in 1206 package, which is surely will have smaller equivalent series inductance. Bandwidth of such two caps will be much wider. And if we continue putting more capacitors in smaller packages, situation will be similar. We will increase bandwidth, filtering high frequencies properly. And this parallel connection can be continued in a very long chain. It all depends on an application and working frequency of your device. Also, it is very common when electrolytic capacitor of a huge value is placed, and after it in parallel, a lot of ceramic capacitors installed. In this case, you have large capacity with a good frequency response. Let's now have a look at examples of real circuits. This is capacitors under an Intel CPU. They care about power quality. Or this. It's a Raspberry Pi schematic. As you can see, they put a lot of bypass caps on power pins, here, here and here, just everywhere. Because stable power is the one of the most important things when it comes to a digital signals. But not in every particular circuit you have to bother like this. In different applications different values are needed. And if you develop a high frequency circuit, it is just necessary to add as much capacitors as you can to make bandwidth as wide as you can. But if you make a low frequency circuit, all your integrated chips are low frequency ones, it will be just enough to put 100 nanofarads capacitor and don't bother. It's just not worth your time. 
This is why in a lot of applications you can see so much 100 nanofarads capacitors, like here, in this Arduino Uno circuit. And for their application it's just enough. This is because engineers don't want to spend their time calculating and experimenting with value of every cup in every particular situation. There is no need, because 100 nanofarad just do its job. In addition, there is almost no difference in price between 100 nanofarads and smaller ones. So just spam 100 nan and you're good. But you shouldn't underestimate electrolytic capacitors after this video. Although electrolytic capacitors have high parasitic parameters, they are still second most popular types of capacitors, but in low frequency circuits. Thanks for watching, subscribe and check out other videos. There might be something you don't know yet. Bye.